Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Art Heinrich, or I'm the interim provost at WPI, and I'm honored to welcome you here today to witness the inauguration of Dr. Grace Wong as the 17th president of Worcester Polytechnic Institute. The national anthem will be performed by the WPI Festival Chorus. Following the national anthem, the invocation will be given by the dean of the WPI Business School, the Henry G. Stoddard Endowed Professor of Management and WPI alumna, the Reverend Deborah Jackson, class of 1989 and 2000. Please remain standing for the national anthem and the invocation. In the Hebrew Bible, Psalm 67, verse 1, the psalmist said, May God be gracious to us and bless us and make their face shine upon us. These words are words of invocation, a simple act of petitioning the divine for blessings, mercy, and grace. As we began this solemn act of inauguration, it is appropriate for us to petition for grace. Grace, the unmerited favor of God. Grace, the help we receive in the time of need. Grace, the free gift that we would lovingly share with others. Grace, blessings for the 17th president of our beloved WPI, asking for grace, I invite you 
to pray with me. Everlasting and eternal one, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for this gathering and we give you thanks for this time that you have ordained such a time as this that we bear witness to the inauguration of Dr. Grace J. Wong as the 17th president of WPI. We are so grateful that we have this opportunity that we might bring our petition to you, that we might ask for favor, Lord God, favor that would be pronounced on the top of her head to the soles of her feet, favor and grace for her leadership and for all that she brings us to and through as WPI. We ask that you would lead her with power, passion, and purpose in the way that you would have her go. But more than for our president, Lord God, we ask for your blessings and your petitions over this, our beloved WPI. We pray, O oh God, that through her leadership, we might be a blessing, a blessing in the city, a blessing in the field, blessings where we go, where we come, blessings in all things that all people might see us and recognize your favor upon us. But blessings not just because we want to enjoy these for ourselves. Blessings are not for our aggrandizement. No, blessings that we might be a blessing to someone else. Allow us to be blessings to the students that you've given in our care. Blessings for our faculty and our staff. Blessings in this community that Worcester might see us as a shining light, that the Commonwealth might see us as a shining light, that our light shines in the nation, that our light shines in the world, that we be the people you've called us to be using the gifts that you've given, that we lift up others, that we make a difference in this world, that we have impact. This is our prayer. And knowing you as a God who hears and pours out blessings, we pray that you would receive and establish these petitions on our behalf, truly. May the God of grace bless us, keep us, and sustain us. In your name we pray, and let all in the assembly say with me, amen. Thank you, Reverend Jackson. Please be seated. On behalf of the WPI community, I have the uh, honor to extend a warm welcome to several of our honored guests. Some join us on stage today and some are in the audience. I want to welcome the WPI Board of Trustees. I want to especially welcome former WPI President John Strauss. The Honorable Joseph Petty, Mayor of Worcester, has joined us today. Eric Batista, Worcester City Manager. Delegates from more than 30 colleges and universities and learned societies, including Nichols College Interim President William Pachinski, Cummings School of Veterinary Medicine at Tufts, University Dean Alistair Cribb, the Dean College President Kenneth Elmore, Worcester State University's President Barry Maloney, Clark University President David Fithian, University of Massachusetts Lowell Chancellor Julie Chen, Assumption University President Greg Weiner, Anna Maria College President Mary Lou Rattel, SUNY Rockland Community College President Lester Rapallo. I also want to welcome Springfield Technical Community College President John Cook, many faculty, many staff, students, alumni, community, and friends. And I want to give a particularly warm welcome to Dr. Grace Wong's family and friends. Welcome. We're also honored to have Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll on campus earlier today. She's also a parent of a current student at WPI, so I think that's 
one good reason she should visit here more often. <laughs> she was joined by Senator Robin Kennedy, Senator Michael Moore, Representative John Mahoney, and Representative Kate Donahue. Before we welcome Bill Fitzgerald, Chair of the board, WPI Board of Trustees to the podium, I invite you to watch a short video that honors tradition and celebrates innovation as we pay tribute to President Wong. The music you will hear is composed by WPI professor David Ibbett and derived from his Black Hole Symphony, a sonification based on the electromagnetic spectrum of the active galaxy containing a supermassive black hole, performed at the Museum of Science in Boston. Enjoy. Good afternoon. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, it is an honor and a privilege to be here with you on this historic day as we officially install Grace Wong as WPI's next president. Our ceremony includes a sequence of welcomes from many members of the WPI community. Though unable to join us today in person, we are delighted to have a welcome message from United States Senator representing Massachusetts, Edward J. Markey. Hello, I'm Senator Ed Markey. It's my great pleasure to greet you on this momentous day as Dr. Grace Wong is formally inaugurated as the 17th president of Worcester Polytech Institute. I always say Massachusetts isn't just the Bay State, it's the brain state. And since Worcester is the literal heart of Massachusetts, we know that WPI is a doubly vital organ of our Commonwealth. WPI has been on the cutting edge of developing technologies of the future since its founding. Never before has your work been so important. As we face the existential threat of climate change, the realities of global public health crises, and an increasingly interconnected global economy, we need bold, innovative solutions for generational challenges. And those solutions will come in part from the incredible minds at WPI. President Wong understands this momentous responsibility. I know this because last year, Congressman McGovern and I welcomed Dr. Wong at the Capitol, where we highlighted WPI's leadership in advancing sustainable technologies in one of her first acts as president-elect. Just last week, the Environmental Protection Agency announced a student team at WPI was among the 16 nationwide to receive funds to research and develop innovative solutions to address environmental and public health challenges. President Wong knows how the worlds of science and industry and government and philanthropy and higher education and innovation all intersect. And she knows the partnerships that must be created to advance our society. She embodies the principles that have always defined Worcester Polytech Institute and combines them with a modern vision to bring solutions to the challenges facing our Commonwealth, our nation, and our world. I believe under her leadership, WPI will also stand for wisdom, progress, innovation. WPI is fortunate to have a leader like, like President 
Wong at the helm and all of us in Massachusetts are lucky to have her join our community. And while a new president leads WPI, I'll be fighting in Washington to ensure that a college education is affordable and attainable for every family and that students' futures aren't determined by debt, but that our educational system prepares the next generation of students to thrive in the workforce and that our universities and our researchers have the resources that they need to remain at the cutting edge of innovation. Madam President and the entire WPI community, congratulations. And I thank you. And I look forward to continuing to be your partner and to everyone. We're gonna accomplish a lot of great things together with your leadership, President Wong at the center of all of it. Congratulations. I now invite to the podium, on behalf of the undergraduate students, Gabriella Ross. Hello. Good afternoon, esteemed faculty, staff, students, past and present, members of the Board of Trustees, and distinguished guests. It is with great honor and privilege that we gather here today to inaugurate WPI's 17th president, Dr. Grace Wong. Her journey to this moment has been marked by extraordinary accomplishments, unwavering dedication, and true commitment to the advancement of education, research, and innovation. With an extensive background spanning academia, industry, and government, President Wong brings a wealth of experience and expertise to our university. Her impact has been felt across the globe by the students she inspired as a professor in mechanical and materials engineering and by entire institutions from Ohio to New York where she spearheaded transformative initiatives. Her visionary leadership led to a substantial growth in research fund, and research funding, the establishment of interdisciplinary research centers, and strategic university industry partnerships. Yet, President Wong's exemplary service extends beyond academia. This is evident in her appointments to the National Quantum Initiative Advisory Committee and her involvement in organizations such as the Government University Industry Research Roundtable and the New York Science Academy. These roles underscores her commitment to shaping the future of innovation at a global scale. At the National Science Foundation, her stewardship facilitated groundbreaking discoveries and technological advancements, while her advocacy for engineering education has left a lasting mark. During my time as Student Government Association President, I had the privilege of working closely with President Wong. I witnessed firsthand her unwavering commitment and passion for a university campus. Her interactions with students reveals not only, not only President Wong's natural charisma, but also her genuine care for the student body. From the moment she stepped onto WPI's campus, she made her mission to connect with students on a personal level. I was deeply impressed by her ability to greet students by their first names demonstrating a level of attentiveness that truly sets her apart. During the hustle and bustle of move-in day, President Wong was right there in the dorms welcoming students, greeting families, and even carrying boxes. Her presence and willingness to engage with students during such a pivotal moment spoke volumes about her dedication to fostering a sense of community and belonging at WPI. She is present in all aspects of student life. Around this time last year, she attended Black Student Union's fashion show and the American Cancer Association Relay for Life events that were both happening on the same day and ran late into the evening. Her mere attendance at both events was a testament to her unwavering support for our, universe, for our diverse student organizations and their endeavors. President Wong's ability to balance multiple commitments while remaining fully present and engaged shows her dedication to our university's commitment. And President Wong, we have not only a visionary leader, leader, but also a compassionate advocate 
for the well-being and success of every member of our community. As we embark on this new chapter under her leadership, let us be inspired by her example and work together to build a brighter future for WPI. Please join me on behalf of the undergraduate students in extending our heartfelt congratulations and warmest welcomes to Dr. Grace Wong. Thank you. Now I'd like to welcome to the podium on behalf of the graduate students, Jazz Bill Aponte. Good afternoon. Uh, Dr. Grace Wong, on behalf of the graduate student body at WPI, I'm honored to welcome you as WPI president. As you fulfill your calling today, we are confident that with your leadership, WPI will empower us all to unlock our potential and purpose so that we can discover our callings too. Throughout your first year at WPI, we have been inspired by your vision of, of innovation, which recognizes the value of diverse minds working together. You have encouraged us to harness the power of technology by actively caring and engaging in solving the pressing challenges of our world. We have seen your dedication to build community through humble and genuine leadership. As you lead the way towards our goal of becoming local and global leaders in purpose-driven education and research, we trust that your presidency will continue to foster WPI values and bring the best in us. On behalf of the graduate student body, we wish you all the very best for your journey at WPI. I now welcome to the podium uh, Pamela Lynch, uh, class of 2005 and president of the WPI Alumni Association. Hello, everyone. President Wong, on behalf of the global WPI alumni community, it is my great pleasure to officially welcome you to this great university. During your year, first year leading WPI, you have met many of us on campus and around the world. You have seen firsthand how we live the promise of a WPI education. We are the drivers of innovations that impact individuals and communities every day. We are the leaders of industry, of organizations, of governments, and of change. We are the innovators, the makers, the doers, who are changing the world for the better, and we've been doing this for more than 150 years. We are nearly 50,000 people strong, and we stand not behind you, President Wong, but with you as you lead our beloved alma mater. We are energized and excited to see what the next chapter holds for DRPI with you at the helm. You can depend on our collaboration, on our leadership, and on our support always. As you have already seen and experienced, the DRPI community cares. It is also a community of traditions. On these mon momentous occasions, these closing words from Two Towers, A Centennial History of DRPI by Mildred McClary Thompson. Today, the Institute stands solidly atop its rounded hill still overlooking the city and reaching toward the sky. It stands there for more than any other reason because by some strange and wonderful supply, there have always been enough people who cared. Congratulations again and welcome President Wong to the WPI community, one that cares deeply about each other and about this remarkable institution.
I now welcome to the podium Calvin Cummings, Assistant Director of Religion and Spiritual Life, who is one of approximately 800 staff at WPI. He kept the goat for 93 and had it kept without a fee. In spite of that, he did confess. I think it could be done for less. In his letter of gift and instructions, John Boynton, founder of the Worcester County Free Institute of Industrial Science, writes that the aim of the school shall ever be the instruction of youth, to train the young for practical life, to, and to be opened freely to youth in the county of Worcester. And on the 11th day of November in 1868, Stephen Salisbury does not omit with great honor and gratitude Boynton's name and instruction and in that the Institute should be free, designed for those to gather in a harmonious association as a dictate of its founder's generosity. While Mr. Boynton was not permitted to live to see his beneficent design carried into effect, we see the nature of his lyric flow in the later famous words of our mascot's namesake, Gampe Kawada. Kawada, class of 1893, concludes an argument in the hallowed lecture room of Salisbury Labs, Labs with the words, perhaps it could be done for nothing, or if not nothing, perhaps for less. Kawada suggests a change in stride as the class tries to tend to the rising costs associated with keeping their decidedly new living mascot. He thought that anyone would be honored by the opportunity of keeping a friend goat and held faith that someone could, could be found to keep the goat for nothing or perhaps charge less. Kawada does not just inherit the legacy, this legacy of generosity from the Institute's founder, but found it to be part of student life at WPI. In the published diary of the alumnus, he writes of the kindness he experienced from students and staff. Once my money order from Japan was delayed by three months, and if I couldn't pay my bill, there would be no choice but to expel me. The house where I got my meals was run by two widows. When they heard about this, the women, women running the boarding house kept feeding me at no cost. During those three months, my friends would say, I hear you've run out of money. Take this. After that, I never experienced such great kindness again. I look back to addresses, inaugurations, and memoirs past to make provision for this present inauguration and dedication. Our founder desired that the Institute's design give ample and thorough instruction in several parts of education pursued so that it may be an advantage to coming generations, a help to industrious and intelligent young persons, and an honor to the community in which it is established, and that those who are trained in it be useful citizens well-versed in the sciences and arts, and be people of good morals who will lead upright and honest lives in the sight of God and humankind. As staff, along with the trustees, we are entrusted with the care of this institution, together with the, de de with the dedication of inaugural president, president Grace. All withstanding budget cuts this year Together with our sober minds, we broach this question, can it all be done, perhaps with less? I suggest our invitation is to remember the tradition of enacting great kindness, that of which we inherit from the two widows who cared for Gampe Kawada. And as these provisions are applied faithfully at WPI, in daily use and in devotional exercises, as we consist with a due sense of dependence upon the divine blessing, we give our attention and thoughts to address the throne of divine grace on behalf of our enterprise. 
and send our most solemn and earnest prayer of dedication to President Dr. Grace Wong. We now, together with her, carry the mantle of care towards this great institution. Amen, amen, and amen. Now I welcome to the podium Associate Professor of Aerospace Engineering, Mark Richmond, who serves as Secretary of the Faculty. It is a profound honor for me to have this opportunity on behalf of a faculty that has always been a family to welcome our new president, Grace Wong, to our campus community. And although I speak here on behalf of the faculty, the richness of our community emanates from the interdependence we so enjoy between our faculty, our students, and our staff. There's an old WPI joke in which a new president, after just a few days on campus, bumps into the secretary of the faculty and asks for advice on how best to deal with these strange A, B, C, D, seven week things of ours. And the secretary of the faculty, a great pragmatist at heart, thinks for a minute. Do just one thing, he says. Take a careful look at your contract, read the fine print, and make sure there's nothing in there about a two-term limit. <laughs> On to serious matters. Uh, as much as WPI has accomplished since its founding in 1865, its great appeal remains in its unlimited and still untapped potential an appeal both grounded in our proud past and carried aloft by the possibilities of what we can become. As you, President Wong, have just begun to articulate a vision for our university in these challenging times for higher education, we have come to appreciate the respect and understanding you have shown for our past, for the structures of openness that have given rise to our greatest achievements and for the prominent voice of our faculty in daring to establish our distinctive educational character and signature academic programs. So today, all of us, including many who have devoted their entire professional lives to WPI and many more who have made it their home do formally and enthusiastically entrust this university to your able leadership. It is an act of faith that we have in your judgment, in your belief in us, and in your commitment to our community. In closing, we ask you not to be modest in your goals, but to be bold with all of our best ideas. We ask you not to take small steps, but to take giant leaps guided by our collective imaginations. We ask that you break new ground with the creativity of this vibrant community, and that you do so inspired by our wildest dreams. And finally, President Wong, here's to many years of your steady leadership with no term limits in sight. Since the founding of this great university in 1865, when 10 entrepreneur John Boynton and industrialist Ichabod 
Washburn, articulated their visions of theory and practice as the core foundation of this new university. WPI's fortune and that of its home city have been intertwined. It was the citizenry of this city who supported this vision and provided WPI with the needed financial resources, its campus, its first buildings, and much more. In return, WPI graduates built many of the industries that helped make Worcester one of the most important and innovative manufacturing centers in the nation. This supportive and mutually beneficial partnership has continued for more than 150 years. Since 2012, Worcester and our university have benefited from the leadership of our next speaker. It's my pleasure to introduce to you a true friend of WPI, Mayor Joseph Petty, who brings greetings on behalf of all of Worcester. Mayor Petty. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, President Wong. Members of the WP WPI Board of Trustees, honored guests, including our city leadership, Eric Batista, city manager, former lieutenant governor and mayor, Tim Murray, and of course, the members of the WPI community. I'm thrilled to be with you on behalf of the people of Worcester on the occasion of President Wong's inauguration. We are a city of innovation, talent, and determination. We are proud to be home to Worcester Polytechnic Institute. I am pleased to celebrate this momentous occasion for a brilliant, kind leader that will be at the helm of one of the best engineering colleges in the nation. On behalf of the city of Worcester, I am honored to welcome Dr. Grace Wong, the 17th president of WPI. Dr. Wong is the second female president in a long line of incredible minds that have led this fine institution for nearly 160 years. Dr. Wong is more than an extremely talented scientist and holder of seven patents. She serves as a representation of women in STEM, and she's ready to continue keeping WPI's positive momentum when it comes to living out the school's mission statement, turning knowledge into action to confront global challenges. The ongoing partnership between WPI and the city of Worcester will only be better because of Dr. Wong, and WPI will continue to make an impact that extends outside city limits. As you all know by now, WPI has fostered brilliant minds, from icons like the father of modern rocketry, Robert Goddard, to the inventor of Segway, Dean Kamen, to Atwater Kent, a radio pioneer, and of course, Jay Giles. I stand before you knowing that the students here today will be making a difference in our world and years to come. Within our neighborhoods, WPI has also been sharing its wealth of knowledge and resources through the Worcester Community Project Center. Programs supporting women's research and mentorship ensure that learners from all, over, all backgrounds can be taught skills to solve problems in their community. Dr. Wong has an impressive record as a material scientist first starting at IBM Atachi Global Storage Technologies, then joining the National Science Foundation, serving in academia, and finally appointed by the United States Department of Energy to serve on the nation's, the National Quantum Initiative Advisory Committee. At every step of her professional journey, Dr. Wong has brought humility and a willingness to support those around her so that she can also thrive. I look forward to progress that will come with her time as president. Furthermore, representations matter. Having people like Dr. Wong in positions of powers serve as a positive example for women who blaze trails in the traditionally male-dominated field. I welcome President Wong as she is inaugurated into this essential role. I am looking forward to working with her in the future. Congratulations, Dr. Wong. It is now my privilege to introduce our inaugural keynote speaker, Terry Sevnoski. Dr. Sevnoski is a pioneering, award-winning scientist in neural networks and computational neuroscience. And just this month, 
He won the prestigious 2024 Brain Prize, the world's largest brain research prize. Dr. Sosnowski is currently the Francis Crick Professor at the Salk Institute for Biological Studies and a distinguished professor of neurobiology at UC San Diego and co-directs the Institute for Neural Computation and the National Science Foundation Temporal Dynamics of Learning Center. One of only 10 living individuals elected to all three national academies, he serves as the president of the Neural Information Processing Systems Foundation and is a former investigator with the Howard Hughes Medical Institute. In addition, he is the founding editor-in-chief of Neurocomputation, a monthly journal from MIT Press. Please, wel please welcome Dr. Terence Zivnowski. So it's a great honor to be here to uh, celebrate this uh, inauguration. I served on the State University of New York Research Council when Grace was the senior vice chancellor for research and economic development. AI was just emerging back then, and Grace saw that it could reshape research and education in the SUNY system. Carrie Stoller, who was on the SUNY Board of Trustees, and Kristen Johnson, who was the SUNY chancellor, both of whom are here today, backed her up, and SUNY got a head start in AI at the Stony Brook University uh, for the Institute for AI-Driven Discovery Innovation. That's vision. How many of you remember the Star Trek TV series in the 1960s and all the spin-off movies since then? Put up your hand. Okay. Captain Kirk was able to communicate with aliens using a handheld universal language translator. That was science fiction. I have here, and you have in your pockets, an app, the Google Translate app, which is, for all practical purposes, a universal language translator. So it's now a science fact. I'm waiting for the Apple Beam Me Up app. AI is improving so fast that no one can predict where it will be next year or even next month. We're in the midst of a cognitive revolution that is enhancing human cognitive power in the same way that human physical power was enhanced by the steam engine in the Industrial Revolution 250 years ago. Yes, there were teething problems back then. Steam engines had a tendency to blow up until engineers figured out how to regulate them. AI is also having its teething problems. Why now? AI was an overnight success that took seven years to achieve. Learning is the secret sauce that was missing from AI in the 20th century. Learning algorithms being used today were invented in the 1980s inspired by the computational architecture of brains, massively parallel processing units. You have 100 billion neurons in your brain, highly interconnected with weights, synapses, connections between the units that are learned from experience. Nature was there first. But back then, we didn't know or have the computing power needed to scale up these networks or the mass of data needed to train them. We had to wait. Learning algorithms in neural networks, they're the secret sauce. Can extract information from diverse sources of data, including images and videos. This information can be used to create knowledge, knowledge that leads to understanding. And understanding is the basis for wisdom. We're still working on the knowledge part and hoping for wisdom to emerge. Early days. In preparing this talk, I asked ChatGDP, what is unique about Worcester Polytechnic Institute? Within seconds, it listed eight major areas. The first one was project-based learning. 
in the words of ChatGTT, the WPI plan, its innovative undergraduate curriculum, integrates classroom studies with projects that challenge students to apply their knowledge to real world problems. This approach encourages teamwork, leadership, and problem solving skills. I checked this out and it wasn't a hallucination. <laughs> this caught my eye because it's an example of active learning, which we know is a much more effective way to learn than passive learning in classrooms. I'd like to end with a story about our experience with interactive learning when we brought a robot into a classroom at UC San Diego. UC San Diego was designated by the NSF as one of the major tenure science of learning centers that brought together researchers from 12 universities worldwide. We focused on two areas, learning and in brains and machine learning, which turned out to be a good combination. In one of our projects, we constructed a robot called Ruby that could grasp objects, move its eyes, and make facial expressions. In fact, it even had uh, fiber optic hair that would change colors. <laughs> in one of our projects, we constructed a, this robot and brought it into a preschool classroom with 18-month-old toddlers. And if you've ever been in a classroom and they're running around, they have very short attention spans. We were unprepared for what happened next. The toddlers ran over to Ruby. The boys grabbed Ruby's arm and yanked it off. <laughs> we took Ruby back to the shop, not to install industrial strength arms, but to attach pressure sensors. The next time the boys tried to grab its arm, Ruby would cry out. And the girls rushed forward to hug Ruby. This is called social engineering. We learned a lot about how to hold the attention of toddlers. We used a Teletubby iPad to teach them. We feared that teachers would be concerned about losing their jobs. Quite to the contrary, they loved Ruby. Ruby could hold the attention of rambunctious toddlers when the teacher had to help one of the toddlers or there was a visitor. The AI assistants was seen by the teacher as a way to enhance their jobs as teachers. Many chat GPT users have had similar experiences, including writers, lawyers, doctors, computer programmers, and scientists. And many of you, I'm sure, have also been helped. Put up your hand if you've been helped by chat GPT. OK. Too many to count. So here's what I concluded. AI will make you smarter. You will not lose your job, but it will change. Be patient. This will take decades, not the centuries it took for the Industrial Revolution to change our lives. So in closing, I'd like to offer to Grace, President Wong, the Vulcan salute. <laughs> Grace, may you live long and prosper. Thank you, Terry. I ask that uh, Professor Mark Richmond, Secretary of the Faculty, and Professor George Heinemann, Chair of Faculty Committee on Governance, join Dr. Wong at center stage. Dr. Wong, I am confident that you shall find WPI to be a thriving, exciting university and proven worth with a stellar reputation. Ours is a personal university. We have an energetic and innovative student body, superb and dedicated faculty and staff, proud and supportive alumni, and strong relationships with industry, city, and state. The energy and ambitious enthusiasm of our WPI community are infectious. 
our students and alumni will continue to positively impact the quality of life of people around the world. And the global need for WPI's distinctive STEM education has never been greater. Our immersive student experience, project-based learning, and purpose-driven research provide a strong foundation for you to shepherd WPI into a new era of excellence. In full support of your efforts stands a united board of trustees and a community looking to your leadership with great confidence and optimism. On behalf of the Board of Trustees and by the power vested in me by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, I charge you to, formally, to perform faithfully the trust we are placing in you. You have the full assurance of our help for your and WPI's success. What our university has achieved is only a bright promise of that which you have yet to accomplish. It is with great pleasure that Professor Heinemann and I present you with the symbols of your office. In May 1865, the Senate and House of Representatives for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts issued this charter and created Worcester County Free Institute of Industrial Science. This founding document is the official recognition of WPI and its mission. As president, you accept the responsibility of continuing in that mission. The presidential medallion carries a great seal of the Institute. The seal records the founding philosophy of connected theory and practice, represented by the books and the arm and hammer, as well as the motto, Lehr und Kunst. The seal also recognizes WPI's strong foundation in the city of Worcester, at the heart of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. The links in the chain that carry the medallion record the names of the 16 presidents who came before you. Today, we add a 17th link to the chain. I invite you to please rise as you are able and join me in the warmest of welcomes for the 17th president of Worcester Polytechnic Institute, Dr. Grace Wong. Chair Fitzgerald, Board of Trustees, elected officials, delegates from other colleges and universities, alumni, faculty, students, staff, and friends of WPI, thank you for joining us today. <clears throat> Let me first thank all the faculty, students, and staff at the WPI. Thank you so much for what you do every day for our beloved institution. 
I also want to take the opportunity to thank all the members of our community who have made today very special. It warms my heart to see how much you all love WPI. And let me also first take the opportunity to introduce you to my friends and family. My longtime mentor and friend, Carrie Stoller, and his wife, Maricela. Carrie, thank you so much for always inspiring me to learn more and do more. My dear friend, Christina Johnson, who has been tremendous inspiration for so many women in STEM, and she's absolutely a trailblazer herself. And my dear friend, Tony Bocanfuso, who has joined us today also. Tony, thank you so much for your friendship and longtime support throughout my career. And of course, my great friend, uh, Terry Snyashiki. Thank you for being here, Terry. I also want to introduce my family, my dear husband here, who always smiles regardless of uh, how crazy my schedule is. <laughs> And my wonderful son, Justin, who's here, brilliant child, but the only time he think I'm cool was when he find out Terry Snatchki is my friend. <laughs> I'm honored and humbled to be with all of you here today. As I continue to learn about WPI's history and think about the future, I have realized the challenges and opportunities facing us today are very much like those facing our founders back in 159 years ago. In 1865, American Civil War was ending. It was a time of momentous change. Soldiers were marching home and they needed jobs. U.S. factories needed educated workers. New technologies were emerging, and America wanted to compete better with European manufacturers on a global stage. In the midst of all these challenges, a small group of leaders right here in Worcester decided to create a new school so that they can teach people how to think and how to do. And that was the beginning of WPI. And that was our founding principle, theory and practice. So from the very beginning, WPI was designed to be forward thinking. The first class of WPI had 32 students, mostly from Worcester. Today, we have 7,300 students coming from 48 states and 89 countries. So much has changed. But yet, we find ourselves in a similar position as our founders. Today, students need education and skills in a changing world. Industry needs STEM talents who are ready for jobs on day one. New technologies are emerging every day in artificial intelligence, machine learning, life sciences, data sciences, and robotics. And we, as a society, are facing significant challenges in terms of environmental and resource sustainability. So here at WPI, how do we meet this moment? With a focus. We must focus on our core mission and focus on the people we serve. A focus on transformative STEM education a focus on high impact research, innovation, and entrepreneurship, and a focus on a highly immersive campus experience that centers well-being, belonging, and community. With the focus, WPI will become an even more empowering, leading edge, and inclusive STEM institution where our faculty students, staff, and alumni across the world push boundaries, explore solutions, and blaze trails in the future. WPI will become even more a place that enable new ways of thinking and new ways of doing. So let me share some thoughts 
about these focus areas. First, transformative STEM education. Yes, new technologies are emerging, but technological advances in many ways elevate the importance of human skills. Work in teams, think critically, be creative, understand cultures, communicate well, solve problems, act ethically, and lead. These skills are no longer optional. They are essential. And here at WPI, we have been teaching these essential skills for the past 50 years through project-based learning. Our students work in interdisciplinary teams at more than 50 global project centers across six continents. And they work on real problems in a real world setting impacting real communities. So in Worcester, Santa Fe, London, Kyoto, Cape Town and beyond, our students learn to be team players, critical thinkers, effective communicators, and value creators. We must build on these successes and bring WPI's transformative STEM education to a whole new different level. Today, STEM students need to have not only the fundamental knowledge in their field, but also data, data analytics, and AI competency. And beyond that, they also need to understand business and policy principles, as well as ethics, cultural, societal, and historical context. Exciting and frequently unexpected career pathways emerging from the, the interfaces of disciplines. And we at the WPI will continue to inspire our students with new ways of thinking, new horizons, and new career pathways. WPI faculty are known to be forward thinking and agile. Back in 1979, WPI launched the nation's first graduate program in fire protection engineering. In 2004, we funded the first undergraduate program in interactive media and game development. And in 2007, WPI established the nation's first bachelor's and master's degree program in robotics engineering. And that momentum continues. Just recently, we launched the new programs in artificial intelligence, financial technology, and global health. All with a goal to prepare our students for the careers of the future. So that's our first focus transformative STEM education. Second focus, high impact research, innovation, and entrepreneurship. WPI researchers are impact driven. They build technology pr pr uh, platforms to improve math learning for children, develop autonomous vehicles, and create surgical robots. They figured out how to recycle batteries from electric vehicles and are exploring hydrogen fuel cells for aviation. They invented self-healing concrete, explore new ways of biomanufacturing, develop oxygen sensors for premature infants, and study tissue regeneration and drug de delivery. They use AI to identify wound infections help pain management and open new possibilities in digital health. Startup companies using technologies invented in WPI have created over 500 jobs and raised more than $1.7 billion in capital in the last decade or so. Our vision for WPI is to become an even more exciting place where people explore research frontiers, discover and innovate. WPI will continue to grow as a technology and talent hub where great ideas go from lab to the marketplace through startup ventures and corporate partnerships. So that's our second focus, high impact research innovation, and entrepreneurship. Third, a highly immersive campus experience that centers well-being, belonging, and the community. 
Let me be clear. Nothing is more important than the well-being of our community. Mental health is a nationwide complex issue on many colleges' campuses. It requires a persistent, long-term, and comprehensive efforts. And here at the WPI, we are strongly committed to those efforts. And just name a few here. We have established the Center for Wellbeing and increased the support through the Student Development and Counseling Center. We have incorporated Wellbeing Days into our academic calendars. And working together, I know we can and we'll do more. Today, our students learn inside and outside classrooms. Learning happens anywhere, anytime, and through many platforms. It's a highly immersive experience. In-person interactions are more, uh, more important than ever. So here at WPI, we will power a highly dynamic, immersive, and supportive campus experience where our students faculty, staff, learn, work, live, socialize, and thrive. Our vision of WPI is a place where people of all background and identities respect and support each other, where all people feel free to express themselves, share their stories, and make meaningful contributions. And that is our third focus on highly immersive campus experience that values well-being, belonging, and community. So as we look forward, I'm excited to announce some great news today. Alumni, parents, and friends of WPI have come together in the last few months to contribute more than $18 million to the university. This gives we will help, help support our three focus areas. And some of these generous members of WPI community are with her, us today. And it's my great pleasure to recognize them. Mike Abrams, class of 1977, and his wife Nancy, their gift is the fourth largest commitment to WPI to date. And it will support future capital projects. Duran Apelian, longtime faculty member and provost emeritus, his wife Seta and their daughter Tani, their gift will establish an endowment for a global project center. John Macheski, class of 1985, and his wife Mara and their daughter Erin, class of 2023. Their gift will support their family scholarship endowment and endow a new research fund in energy resources. Steve Vassalo, class of 1993, and his wife, Chui. Their gift will establish a professorship in memory of Steve's mother, Helen G. Vassalo, who was a longtime WPI faculty member and MBA class of 1982. James Wilkinson, class of 1991 and graduate class of 1993. His gift will support an endowed scholarship for undergraduate students. I would also like to recognize an anonymous donor who has established the Edward HCU endowed scholarship to support our undergraduate students. Edward Yu was an immigrant from Hong Kong who settled here in Worcester about 50 years ago. He supported his children's WPI education, which has completely transformed their futures. So please join me to give a round of applause to all our generous donors. <clears throat> So here we are on this hill, looking forward, just as WPI's founders did 159 years ago. We must meet this moment with focus, a focus on our transformative STEM education, 
a focus on high impact research, innovation, and entrepreneurship, a focus on our highly immersive campus experience that centers well-being, belonging, and our community. WPI alumnus Goddard, uh, Robert Goddard once said, it's difficult to say what's impossible. For the dream of yesterday is the hope of today and the, the reality of tomorrow. WPI is a innovative and learning community. Here, our students, faculty and staff find their people, pursue their passion, and live their purpose with focus, determination, and collective effort. We will achieve a new level of excellence right here at WPI beyond our imagination. And once again, it's a great honor to serve as WPI's president. Thank you so much. Thank you. Please be seated. Since 2001, the WPI Presidential Medal has honored outstanding individuals from all backgrounds and disciplines who through their professional or personal accomplishments embodied the technological humanist an ideal that has been at the heart of WPI's approach to education. Today, I'm proud to award the Presidential Medal to two remarkable individuals. Would Judith Nish please come forward? After earning a bachelor's degree in civil engineering at the WPI in 1975, Judith Nish spent more than 45 years in the field, becoming a registered professional engineer in 27 states and a lead accredited professional. As a civil engineer, she has focused on designing, permitting, and managing projects related to site development and infrastructure and the blazing new trails for women in engineering. In 1989, at the time when it was highly unusual for a woman to own an engineering firm, she established Niche Engineering Inc. Today, the firm comprises 125 people with three offices in Massachusetts and one in Washington, DC. Much of the firm's civil engineering work specializes in designing and consulting for sustainable aspects of green building projects. And also in 1989, Nish became the first alumni elected to WPI's Board of Trustees, where she first the female alumna, I should say, elected to the WPI's Board of Trustees, where she served for 23 years including 16 years as chair of facilities and campus infrastructure com committee. She brought a commitment to sustainable development to WPI and oversaw the development and construction of multiple LEED certified buildings on campus. Legions of students credit her as a thoughtful advisor and mentor. She received an honorary Doctor of Science degree from the Massachusetts Maritime Academy back in 2010 and an honorary Doctor of Engineering degree from WPI in 2015. And in recognition of the positive impact she has had on her profession and on her alma mater and its students, Nish was inducted in the inaugural class of WPI's Hall of Luminaries in 2017. And so, in recognition of her leadership and impact in support of Worcester Polytechnic Institute, I bestow upon Judith Nish the Presidential Medal.
Would Duran Apollian please come forward? <laughs> Duran Apollian is a distinguished professor of materials science and engineering and director of Advanced Casting Research Center at the University of California, Irvine. There, he serves as the senior advisor to the Dean of Engineering. He's also Provost Emeritus and the founding director of the Metal Processing Institute at WPI. Apelian received his bachelor degree in metallurgical engineering from Drexel University in 1968 and his doctoral degree in material science and engineering from MIT in 1972. He's recognized um, for his pioneering work in solid, uh, solidification processing, metal processing, powder metallurgy, and digital manufacturing. Founding editor of the Journal of Sustainable Metallurgy, he has significantly contributed to the establishment of research in resource recovery, reuse, and recycling. During his tenure as WPI's provost from 1990 to 1996, he was instrumental in, in establishing the metal, the metal Processing Institute, MPI, which has become one of the largest industry university consortiums in North America. With over 700 publications and 22 patents, Apelian serves on several technical, corporate, and editorial boards. He has partnered with colleagues, including former students and WPI alumni, to co-found widely known companies, including Materials Strategies, Ascend Elements, Meld Cognition, and Salvos Global, among others. Throughout his career, Apelian has received many distinguished honors, awards, both national and international. He was recognized as WPI Innovator of the Year in 2018 and received the same honor at UCI in 2020. He's a member of the National Academy of Engineering, the National Academy of Inventors, the European Academy of Sciences, the Chinese Academy of Sciences, and also the Armenian Academy of Sciences. So in recognition of his leadership and the impact in support of Worcester Polytechnic Institute, I bestow upon Dr. Duran Apelian the Presidential Medal. part of this historic moment for our WPI University. This now concludes our inauguration ceremony. I ask you to please rise as you are able and remain in place until the stage party recesses. Then we invite you to, to enjoy the music of our WPI pep band on your way to a reception at the Rubin Campus Center. Please rise. <laughs> 